Breaking news. Peyote plants planted on CSUN campus. Anything about peyote, Trisha? Yeah, actually, I know that a peyote cult was actually um, established among the Native Americans in around, you know, 1760s. And then in the in 1976, government actually made it legal for Native Americans to use peyote to practice their religion. Mm -hmm. And it also grows in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas and in the Southwest. So in like Maine, in like desert areas, you'd say? Yeah, in desert areas. What about the U.S.? Um, there's actually been uh, some news that it was found in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, but there's not that much research done about that yet. Oh, okay. Well, now to Rithi Aurora, live from CSUN campus. Rithi, what have you gathered from the scene? Thanks, Roxanne. I'm here at CSUN campus right now to discuss the societal reactions to the discovery of peyote at the school campus. Here with me is a CSUN student, Sarah Aguilar, to tell us a little bit about what she knows about the drug. So Sarah, thanks for being with us. Sorry, what? <laughs> Thank you for being with us. What would you, what have you heard about this issue? Oh um, yeah, I heard that it was planted somewhere on campus. That's super crazy. Um, all I know, I'm pretty sure it's legal, um, unless it's used for religious, religious purposes by like the Native American church, but that's all I know. Yeah, that is pretty crazy because we've actually done our research as well and it is supposed to be legal in the religious context. So what do you know about the consumption of the drug, um, how, how you take it in, and what happens to your body when you do take it in? Um, I think I heard that you either eat it or smoke it, something like that. Actually, my boyfriend's Native American and he used to be part of the Native American church. Oh, very, and, very interesting. Yeah, and I forgot about that. And he was involved in one of the rituals that they do, and he told me that they were in a tent, and they smoke it, and they use feathers to like swish it around and get everyone in there high, and then everyone just is really high and they hallucinate, and it's really spiritual. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. You seem to be quite knowledgeable about this issue. Yeah, kind of. You should take my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Sarah, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, back to you guys in the studio, Roxanne and Trisha. Thank you, Rithi. So, peyote is a hallucinogen. Um, do you know anything about the drug, Roxanne? Um, well, I know some of its health effects. Um, some short-term health effects include nausea, vomiting, paranoia, loss of appetite and sleep, and increased heart rate and blood pressure. And long-term health effects are homicidal, suicidal, or psychotic thoughts and behaviors. Wow, that sounds pretty, very intense. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Um, so, do you, what do you think about its abuse potential? I mean, it is a drug that has no like intended, uh, like or accepted medical use. Mm -hmm. So, I think that it has potential to cause severe and physical dependence, and it's a little bizarre that they use it in Native American churches. Yeah, actually, um, Native Americans use peyote to pray, and they hold ceremonies that are held in teepees that is conducted by a medicine ma um, medicine man. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, prayers usually last from dusk till dawn, and there's a lot of chants and singing going on. Um, and the participants drink tea made from peyote, either in a fresh or powder form, and just 0.3 to 0.5 of peyote. Um, can last you about 12 hours. Oh my god. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy. Stuff. Um, and peyote induces vomiting, which means that you are getting well. Mm -hmm. And these ceremonies um, are believed to help achieve balance in life and realize spirituality. Ah, okay. Yeah. And here's a video. Investigating the practice of peyotism with the Oklahoma Native Americans. Hearing about their beliefs and legal struggles has made me understand them more. Maybe peyote can help people heal. But to be able to come down to a conclusion, I must experience it myself. All participants entering the sweat lodge are fanned by the cedar smoke with eagle feathers to cleanse the human soul before the final stage of the ceremony. I'm still nervous about entering the lodge. It's incredibly hot and claustrophobic. And once you enter, you cannot exit until the ceremony is over. Yeah. Yeah. 
Immediately upon exit of the sweat lodge, we were taken to the stream, which represents a mother's blood and a rebirth. I am reborn. If I didn't have pants on, I would ask you to duck yourself. But you got pants on, so there you go. Back oh, up. fire, brother. Back up by the fire. Get you dragged back up and warmed up. Before I came here, peyote to me was a Schedule One drug, an illicit substance, something that people would take to get high, such as LSD. But after spending two days here, going through the ritual, actually spending more than 20 minutes in a sweat lodge, experiencing that myself, I can tell you one thing. These people are not taking peyote to get high. This is their sacrament, their religion. This is what they believe in. I don't know if it's a placebo, but if it works, if it works for them, it heals. That, my friends, that's what it's all about. Investigations continue on the source of the drug initially even being at a college campus, but school security is currently working on taking steps to remove the drug across campus premises. In other news, what color is this dress? Stay, Stay classy, Northridge! Northridge.